right, so today is finishing day. Uh, PPF is done, car is completely corrected. Uh, we're gonna now uh, coat the thing. So uh, believe it or not, for those of you who aren't into detailing, you just wanna see an orange GT3. We're doing a coating on top of the coated uh, PPF. So we're gonna do uh, Crystal Serum Ultra G-Technics Pro version of the coating. I'm uh, interested to work with that here today. Uh, in between, so we wanna get the coating on, let it sit, let it cure as much as possible. We'll see what kind of timing we have today. And so we wanna wait, we wanna, we wanna gap between Ultra and EXO, which will be the top coat and the sacrificial layer we're gonna put on top of the coating. Uh, so in between us putting the Ultra on, we're gonna remove the wheels, uh, Ultra of the wheels as well. Uh, and what I think we're gonna do, Ultra on the trim too. Yeah. So we're gonna Ultra all the black trim. And, uh, and then so later tonight, uh, this evening, this after, late afternoon is when we'll put uh, XO on and we'd like to get a couple of coats of XO if we can. We'll also treat the rest of the windows and all that stuff. So here we're gonna get it prepared with a 50-50 IPA solution. 90%? Yeah. And uh, I, I found like when you have like the little pools of water mm -hmm. that he's got um, just from spraying it all down with the soap and everything, the straight alcohol doesn't actually remove it. It just kind of glides over it. Mm. And then I add a little bit of water to the alcohol yeah. and it changed completely. So it cleans much better, mm. surprisingly. And so nothing the, fancy here, just don't jack up the paint. Yeah, just be gentle. Uh, are you gonna do it? You're gonna you want me to do it? Watch. Okay. This is, this is more of a watch day for me. Awesome. More work for me. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll step in when you, uh, after you've taught us. So obviously this is what we do to make sure we get a good solid bond with coating. Remove any oils from your hands, leftover residue from the you know, slip solution, which is a fancy term for baby soap. <laughs> and of course any dust or anything like that. Because we did wash, if you didn't watch the previous videos, we did wash it in between. In between polishing and PPF. So that's a monster 1000 GSM, 800 GSM microfiber tech towel. Or auto fiber towel. Ooh, water. Water is the enemy for the coating, for this yeah. coating anyways. What are we doing on the windows? Um, I think I still have some G-Tech stuff. Um, I also have a glass transparency kit. I'd be interested to see what my opinion is of if it's worth the extra pain to do Ultra. I don't give a crap about longevity. What I care yeah. about is what it looks like, what it feels like. I mean, I don't want it to fail in a week, but... As long as the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, what's the difference between 18 months and 24? Who cares? I mean, in theory, people care, but... I mean, in the real world, you're not gonna get more than right, you're gonna three get... to five on like a well-kept... Well, you know, it just depends on how much you care about contamination. Yeah, that too. As soon as you start... <clears throat> As soon as you start messing with, uh, you know, claying it, especially that hardcore stuff that you use, you're gonna scratch the surface, you're gonna mar the surface. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't use that on a <laughs> coated car. You did the front bumper, didn't you? No. Just the hood. <clears throat> if you want to see the LFA. It's a 3,600 mile car, I believe a 2009. All 
All right, so we're gonna do Crystal Serum Ultra. What comes in the box here? Is there anything different from the other stuff? Some gloves, dropper. Do you do pipette or how do you yeah. do? So you get your own pipette. This is a, what, 30 ml bottle? Yep. Yeah. Um, so what, what's the difference here between this and like CSL application wise? You gotta work smaller and faster and be more diligent with your uh, your wiping and avoiding high spots. So is this, so we're just talking wipe on, wipe off? Or do we it, have to? It is a wipe on, wipe off product. Okay, yeah. so we're not messing with flash times or anything like that? Nope. It's just you don't, got about don't do half the 15 hood. seconds. Got it. Okay, well I'm gonna watch you do it and let you do it, I think, so I don't mess it up. <laughs> I'll let you do it. I might get in there a little bit. You can call me a pro. I am G-Tactic Advanced Certified, <laughs> but we didn't do a Ultra, so. So I guess I'm technically not certified, being as we didn't actually use it. I'm going to pop the trunk. And that's just so I avoid getting onto an adjacent panel and mm, so I don't yeah. miss it later on. Yeah. I'm gonna go kind of liberal on the first, get the pad primed. You got to kind of find your your stopping points. You want to get a whole panel if you can, or section off something. Mm -hmm. um, but you also don't want to go out of your reach because then you won't be able to keep up with it. Two towels. Um, I like to use one, but I. I'm pretty good about flipping and memorizing the sides. Mm -hmm. So I can do this towel about four times, flipping back and forth. And then I'll just switch towels as I go. Otherwise I end up forgetting mm -hmm. and Which waste a bunch of money on towels. <laughs> and you like higher pile towel for this? Yeah, I guess this would be you know, considered maybe a medium mm -hmm. compared to like what we're using to do the alcohol. And same thing with like CSL, you want to kind of wipe towards yourself so you're not pushing it too far mm -hmm. on the next panels. And then I'll flip it over. So I just have to memorize what I've used and what I haven't. It can be, can be hard to, to, do, to train like that, so that's the only yeah. downside. I mean, another thing you could do if you have a hard time with that, just use two different color towels. Yeah. First wipe, second wipe, or cut the corner off, or make a mark. Yeah, G-Tech will train you to use two, two, two separate towels. Yeah. Because um, it's easier to, to train people like that. Uh, I've just been doing it this way for a long time. And I'll move down. So the key is to stay organized, yes. especially with a pro coating like this that has quirk. Yeah, and you want to remember, you got to remember, like I stopped here yep. and here, so I got to remember where my overlap is. You don't want to overlap too far or else it'll kind of play funny sometimes. i to open is this. this because this stuff doesn't, uh, doesn't lay on it, so you can't layer this. Right. This is not a layerable coating. I'm sad, I wanna do like six layers. <laughs> 10 layers. And like I said before, you can, you know, I could have gone all the way down that, but I like to stay within my reach and my view. Mm -hmm. So then you don't, you don't forget. And you gotta watch your trim. It won't, won't hurt it. Um, we actually coat over it. You just don't wanna, um, you just don't wanna leave it. Yeah. You put CSL on trim too? Yeah, you can. 
So what's your experience with, so we have P PPF, we just coated it. Mm -hmm. Let's say we needed to remove the coating. Is that PPF pretty much toast? Um, you, you can polish that? PPF um, lightly. Yeah. You just can't like cut it with a microfiber. You have to kind of stick with foam and low speed. Um, but you could cut you could cut it enough to where it would lose that hydrophobic that top coat. Yeah. And apply something over it again. It's tricky. It's just it's not an exact science. You may right start putting the new coating on. You'll see it not. Yeah, I mean you can't see the coating, so it's really hard. I mean, yeah, you don't know if it's actually removed or just a piece of it. We, well, I didn't show it on camera, but we did polish the jams, so we'll coat those too, right? Yeah, it's, I saved those for last so I don't contaminate my pad. Yeah. Yeah, it's the most chance of having a... You get grease, something. like from the door hinges and things like yeah. that. So with this, we just don't want to get greedy and go too big. Right. I'll do the whole door, just because it's... I know I know my limits, mm -hmm. but when it gets to like technical stuff like these areas here, I, I do keep it small. I mean, what does it hurt to err on the side of doing a smaller section? Um, so I find it, you'll get like, if you stop here and then try to do it in sections, you'll, it's really hard to blend those lines because mm -hmm. it'll darken this paint, hmm. you know, quite a bit. I mean, you can visually see it. Um, so and that's why CSL is the consumer coating. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to worry about that at all, really. And you keep closing the bottle. We don't want to introduce Correct. oxygen into the bottle. You don't want the bottle curing on you while you're in the middle of your project. And you always want to keep it pretty saturated. It'll <clears throat> it'll dry up on you really fast if you try to cheap out <laughs> on the product. So you want to get kind of the the bulk off. And then you'll you'll be left with a little bit of <clears throat> what looks like a high spot kind of some streaking, and then it's when you flip your towel and come back and trim it out basically. And that's the whole door. So now we're going over the. PPF specific panel. And any di any difference in application PPF? Not really. I actually find it's a little bit more forgiving sometimes. Yeah. Will you use the same size of that or same size of that microfiber pad the whole way through? No, I'll switch it up. Usually about per side of the car, three panels or so. Um, Cause it will start kind of acting funny cause it's already curing on the pad. You gotta be careful, especially when the car's up high like this cause you can't really see mm, what yeah. you've done. So you have to be just kind of diligent about wiping, you know, beyond where you're working. Same thing with like the pillar, the A pillars here. It's easy to yep. smudge that. So what happens if you screw it up? Uh, you basically got to re-polish it. Um, you need to catch it pretty fast, and that that way it'll it'll be easy still. Um, but if you you, know, you miss it for a whole day, like we find it tomorrow, it's gonna to be much more difficult to, to correct. You gotta be on top of the glass too, because it will also high spot the glass and stick to that pretty good. Do 
We found if you get any like over wiping on the glass, does that uh, you run into issues with getting your glass coating on there? Um, no. Well, I try not to. I try not to get it on the glass. Yeah. Um, and then just make sure, making sure you get it off first. So I always will hit that edge. So I'm mm -hmm. actually hitting it as I'm wiping the panel. See, these are the questions I always get in trouble. I already know the answer to it, <laughs> but you got to ask it. I mean, otherwise, we don't get the information. Yep. I wish I had somebody sitting there asking me questions. While I was I'll come visit you one of these days. Yeah, and you just ask me. Ask you how to run a business. Ask me stupid <laughs> questions. But you already know the answer. How do you to. film that? How do you podcast that? How do you post on YouTube? Don't. <laughs> yeah, I posted that last night about. You know, I make comments. I mean, you you know me, and I mean, I'm pretty much the same on camera as I am in person, and I'll throw like little. You know, like anybody does, like, I mean, you're not as, as opinionated as I am about things, but it's not even an opinion, just I speak fact. You know, and I said something about, uh, I bought these headlights, you know, for the M3, and most people who do goofy headlights are young, yeah. you know, and they want it to be flashy with different color changes and... And so my comment was, you know, it was an interesting experience because I'm buying headlights from a guy that's used to buying from people that are poor and or selling people that are poor and stupid. Yeah. And so then I saw something about that. On yeah. And so then there's a natural attack. Instagram, I think. There's an attack that comes at me because, obviously, because I have an expensive car and a nice house, and so I don't know what your depends on what your definition of rich is, but I, you know I have I just you know saying something that clearly triggered. Some people that are probably wealthier than me that have a benevolent heart that <laughs> triggered something in them, or they are poor and stupid and they just don't know it. And so then it, you know, it gives people a ammunition to, you know, to come at you. I think it's funny, but it's funny I, to read it, and I think it's interesting to to have the discussion, not a debate. I don't do debates very well. <laughs> But a discussion. It's true. You know, I was poor and stupid once too. Yeah. I, want, I wanted, uh, you know, everybody I, is. I would cut the back seat out of my car to put 15s in it. It sounded terrible. The whole car vibrated. It was an idiot move. So on so that piece, the door little, was shut, so it created a line where I got the coating to here, but not here. So, so you I, put a little more coating on to reactivate it? Yeah. Well, no, it's just to blend it, because like I said, it uh, darkens. Uh -huh, yeah. So it'll just a blend. So that's that side, and that towel's done. So we'll start a new towel. So you're gonna use four towels on a car, roughly? Yeah, pretty much. And you're gonna throw them away? Yes. Yeah. You don't you don't actually don't save them and. No, I don't try to wash them or, or reuse them or anything like that. Um, if anything, we'll put them in a pile and use them for like you know fender liners or, or something you know yeah. like that to, to reuse them a little bit but i think a good um, system it never goes back on if you could have the same towels in different colors you could transition from month to month or something like that to make sure you don't ever screw it up yeah that's, that's actually a good idea they do have the about four different colors in this towel so all right let's uh let's have me do an easy spot all right this is like the the bumper pins for you in bowling yeah so when you're coating this fender you won't get it on the hood <laughs> Um, you want to wear gloves. Yeah. All right, so you're going to coach me through this. Yep. I'm going to play dumb. I'm going to make some mistakes on purpose so you can uh, you can look really sharp. All right. See if my training skills are up to par. Yep. Need to become a, what do they call it? Training ver verified or whatever. All right. All right. Is this new or old? This is the old one. Okay, so, you're so gonna flip, flip it up. over. Yeah. Okay. So you have to memorize. Yep, I got so it. So when you put it down. So I'm going to put it down this way. Yep. Um, you got the bottle there. Yep. So just squeeze the pipette. Um, and then you'll, I usually just kind of go. Yep, then do one more. And try to get closer to the edges because that's kind of a dry spot. 
All right, should be okay. good. And then bend that over. Oh. This? Yep, kind of just work it together, and then now you're ready you go. to go. Um, so I always do a wet line. This is kind of hard because you got the fender. Yep. So you want to do kind of your middle of the panel, and then edges, and then come back across your middle. So now I'm going to do edges. Yep. And be you got to be pretty. Um, pretty speedy. No, you don't have to be too fast. Yeah. I guess the precise is the word, because like you'll get onto the next panel, it makes it harder mm -hmm. for yourself. Um, usually two passes, so you'll want to go kind of one way, yeah, and, and then, then the other around. way, and then that's it. Otherwise, you work it too much, and it'll start flashing on you. Just make sure you have good coverage everywhere, and try not to get it on the the I'm vents. And you can kind of, you know, you can see your wet spots mm -hmm. as you're working. So now I'm going to come back. Yep. And you got to get your angles so you can get into all the little edges. And make sure you get in that corner. Yep. All right. That's probably good for that section. And just make sure you have everything covered over here. Well, I haven't gone over it a second time yet. Okay. All right. So I'm going to come vertically. Yep. Good. Memorize this. Yep. This down. Grab my towel. So I always kind of hold from this side. Yeah. And I'll. Yep. In this part, you want to get like the bulk relatively fast. Your circles and try not to push it to other mm -hmm. panels. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna flip it. Not yet. I still got okay. some. There and there, and then come back over here. Kind of just do one more pass over the, the panel. And then now you can flip it. And when you flip it, you don't have to do a lot of pressure, just kind of just let the yeah. towel do the work. And then I'm looking and you're looking through for, the paint, yeah. looking for anything on Anything that's panel. wet right. or um, it'll look smudgy, like similar to this. Yeah. So it's very hard to see, especially on this color. It'll basically just make the car look kind of pale or, or uh, hazy mm -hmm. if you miss it. Pro level right there, bro. Yeah. When are you coming to start with me? <laughs> you can't afford me. <laughs> All right. So now, so that now was memorize. My... Yep. So, so that's your wipe side. That's your yep. polish side. So I'm gonna put my wipe of uh, my polish side down. To be safe, if you want, you can just flip that inside out, and then use that on the next panel. So you go. So now you got a fresh towel. Oh. And then you can start over. And then when you do the next panel, you can flip the whole towel over and do it again <sighs> two more times. All right, door. You ready for a whole door? Yep, I can do it. <laughs> All right. I'm um, no dumb dumb. <laughs> so I guess uh, filming yourself or videoing yourself and doing this more critical procedure is probably not advisable. So there's my back on the side. You want to get a full, so put it all the way down and squeeze and get that full amount. Yeah, there you go. And the same thing, you want to do a, what they call a puddle line, so go yep. across the middle. And then do uh, edges. all your edges, yep. Oh boy. So yeah, you got it on the mirror, I'm so you don't have to remember that. Dang it. <laughs> okay, now I saw you went up. Yeah, it's about half the door, and then now you can go to the top. It's kind of whatever you're comfortable with your re your reach. Yeah, it's no good when you're judging me. No nervous. pressure. I get nervous, especially when I'm on camera. People are watching. Now with the full door, you do have to work a little bit faster. And then you may miss going vertically, so I'll come back horizontally too. Yep. And now when I do hor horizontal, I go in sections about this big. And then go up. Yep, go to the top and there you go. And so you gotta make sure you're hitting these edges because you got a spot that's here that's dry still. There you go. And then same thing, work horizontally kind of up that way. Make sure you get really good around the bottom of that mirror. That's a tricky spot, you gotta kinda, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and make sure you get in the door handle good. Also on the yeah the inside of it, because that's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> that's what the customer feels when they first get in their car. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right. Now you got your towel. What side? Um, yep. So I would do circles. Try not to push it onto the next panel. Yep. Even though I kind of slopped it all over. <laughs> and that's an area you have to get real good. It's a lot of a lot of people get a lot of high spots inside the door handles and edges around them. And I'm gonna do another. Yeah, do one more. Bigger. Yep. Yeah, make sure you kind of use your finger to edge in all those. And now I'll just yeah wipe you know four or five inches onto the next panel at this point. No, um, not yeah, yet. you can keep going. So now you're on the finishing side. <clears throat> Usually I'll have an indirect lighting that I'm following myself with. Yeah. But we got too excited, so we just went for it. We got two people looking, so. Yeah. And there, obviously there's plenty of light in here anyways. Yeah. See, I don't know. Since my lighting, you know, we have the same lighting. Yep. OG lighting, and I don't find the need to have as much external lighting. Like all the scan grip lights and all that, like I've... Yeah, I mean this light, the ambient light, is uh it's nice for you know just light polishing and, and the coatings mm -hmm. um, but when you get you know obviously with the correction work you would need yeah. a stand light of some sort or a flashlight um, make sure you get the back side of this mirror because i know you've got some up on there yeah looks like you got it yeah so what i do at this point so your towel's used up on that side, so now you can flip it, and flip it yeah. use the other side, and now you got two more times. And then what I'll do is, at this point, sometimes I'll just come back, just do a quick once over. Yep. And then you can start, I see we got a little bit right here. Oh, yeah. So then we'll have to take like a Rupes yellow. We can do it by hand um, and some some fast cream, and that will you sure that's remove not that. Come off? Yeah, it'll come off. I mean, you know what? How the heck did that happen? Just too. You messed it up. Look. <laughs> I don't know if the camera will pick it up. It will. So here's the here's the spot right here. It didn't move fast enough. Get it off of there. Okay. I think that was already there. <laughs> we'll never know. Yeah. I'll watch the film back. But as you can see, came right off, no wet sanding required. Yeah, as long as you get it quickly. All right. All right, you do the rest. All right. Did I stress you out enough? No, I'm not. Just what well, we're gonna do it. Let's do it right. You know, I'm a big. Uh, you know, I love training. I love learning. I love you know being a part of learning new methods. Mm, the hands but on. But I like to watch more, and then observe, and then when it's time for me to do it, I do it. You know, I like to do it on my own. I don't know. That's just. I'm just a visual learner. Yeah, I'm the same way. Like, I don't feel the need to, like, let's say we're working on polishing. I want to watch the guy do it, and then I'll go practice on my own time, because I only have a certain amount of time that I can watch. Like, I can, I, yeah, you don't I'd waste rather it, watch like, you do it, right. and I can pick up things. I don't want to waste the, uh, the, the time. That's just my style, the way I prefer to learn. I think a lot of reason why, you know, a lot of people wouldn't do a YouTube channel, you know, I've talked about this, is the fear of, judgment you know i'm not afraid of that i mean i do things wrong every freaking every time i do anything you know it's part of the deal and everybody does yep now this i might get you to help me actually all right so i'm going to do the whole hood instead of doing it in half okay Normally I would do it in half because I don't have, you're not fast enough to get to it all before it's flashing. 
but this is a uh, much easier if you have two people you don't get greedy and try to just knock out the trim while you're at it um no <laughs> sometimes i do i mean we can do it on this one if you want you just have to make sure to wipe that first make sure you get all the way mm -hmm. so you can start wiping that now The only, you know, from a YouTube channel perspective, I thought about just getting the dot two just to go through the process again, yeah. setting it up. You know. Yeah, because I guess with the, you, you always got to have a project, right? Yeah, well, I don't have a problem with that, it seems. <laughs> I've got a thousand projects at all times. I guess that's probably one of the reasons why I haven't done much, because I feel like I don't have the project, like with work, yeah, we have a lot of work here, but I don't have like the personal projects. I've got a billion of them. But I, with, with or without a channel, I've always, it's always been that way for me. Right. Whether it was wealth management or I'd take on, I had everything finally under control and I'd start a new designation. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm the same way, it just takes me longer. Well, when you have a little bit different, this this career choice is a bit more intensive than sitting at a desk, or a lot more, because you have the mental and physical aspect of it. Right. Yeah, you know, when I got in my in that car crash a couple of years year ago or whatever, definitely changed my perspective on the business. You know, because mm -hmm. I was out of work, I couldn't work for two months. Yeah, but there's also a bit of a supply-demand thing there. You know, when you weren't available, some people may have gone elsewhere and then realized that the value, you know, so there's some... Yeah, we see there's, that. There's some advantage to that. We'll miss, we'll miss one car. Well, they'll do a car with us. Mm -hmm. and then they'll not do a car with us the second time because it might have been a little bit more than they wanted to spend. Yeah. They'll go to the other guy. And then when they get the next car, they like come back. <laughs> yeah. That's, you know, the loss of perceived value comes back when you don't get the value that you thought you were going to get right. for the lower cost. Some of it might not even be lower cost, just timing, you know, they don't want to wait. Yeah. yeah. I find that with product a lot is that, you know, sometimes like a lot of times I've, I have issues with supply. So I don't have the stuff. And then I find that it sells more when it's in, you know, when it's hard to get. Yeah. It's like pre-order kind of yeah. stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't do it on purpose. It's just the way it works out. Right. I wish I was calculating enough. I'm too impatient and get too excited to be willing to play a game like that to actually contrive it I just I'm <laughs> incapable of that I just get it excited. takes a lot of it takes a lot to try to contrive something like that yeah to time it all I'm not, and then I'm if you not get it wrong enough. I'm not smart enough for that um, we'll do the bumper now it'd be interesting to see how he uses it I hope he drives the wheels off of it yeah he'll drive it a lot I mean, I never, I never go without, I drive it whenever I want to drive it, you know, my car. Let's do it whenever, whenever I want I mean, to. Now it's a little bit different because I'm a mile from my house to my garage, so. Yeah. You got to purposely go A lot of times somewhere. I'll take the long way or the long way around. Yeah. Are you doing another um, dragon thing? Yeah, I got, th I got three of them. Is that already set up? Yeah. Well, I've got the two GT ones, and then I've got the, the one in June, with the OG one in June. You got Have you been to Helen? Uh -huh. Yeah. I'd rather go there and drive all those roads than go up to Deals Gap now that I've done it. Yeah, that side of the mountains are nice. You do like Wolf Pen and all that stuff? We, we drove for three hours straight, nonstop, 
you know, turning roads like the Dragon, same yep. equivalent kind of roads. Yep. There's 106, no cars. 106, 107. There's we did uh, 348 two. and yep. 60, I yep. think. 60 is. Yeah, amazing road. 348, yeah. or 60 was awesome. No, both of those. A lot ones. of that, and also over on the east side, over in like, um, if you go up to Silva and all that, the Blue Ridge, yeah. that part of the Blue Ridge is yeah. nice. It's 215, 107. Um, what else is over there? But Helena seems like a much better place to, to host. Yeah, they have it's a lot a little, more. It's a little janky, but yeah. More, there's more stuff. Well, I mean, Fontana's. Yeah. Really janky. You're really janky. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I want to stay at Old Edwards is where I want to stay in the Highlands and become such a hotel snob. I mean, do you miss financial planning? No, no, God no. <laughs> I have zero interest in it now. It's like been there, done that, moved on, dead to me. Uh huh. It's kind of like volleyball. You know, I played <laughs> volleyball half my life, and then one day I just decided I'm done. I haven't played since. It's one of those things that's like, uh, the thing I've learned is that I'm never going to be as good as I once was. Right, so it's not worth so it's not pursuing fun. anymore. Yeah, because yeah, then all I do is just reminisce about how good I used to be. Something. <laughs> not to say, you know, I was good, it was just I was as good as I could be. And when I'm done with it, I'm done with it. I'm probably happen with detailing someday, too. Because yeah, for me, find... de detailing, this, this is not the... Detailing is just one aspect for me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Just so happens I get pegged as a detailing channel, but if you actually watch, detailing is maybe half of it. It's just detailing is really intensive and there's a lot that goes into it. I like washing more than I like the, the maintenance, washing, and then of course the, you know, everything that goes around the garage. It's the same yeah. thing with the car. You know, the car is just one aspect. The garage is the anchor. The ironic thing is I don't have a garage. <laughs> you got a bubble. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a pole barn and then a warehouse. Neither of which qualify. But someday when I do it, oh boy, is it going to be awesome. Do you plan on staying in the house that you're at? I think so. All right. So, so. This part, though, you know, after the chaos and the sweat of polishing, this part was always fun. Yeah, I, I enjoy the coating. I used to stress hardcore about it though. Yeah, not messing all that work and yep. messing it up and then having to start over. And that's another argument for, you know, like, like Esoteric's argument is why does it have to be hard? Yeah. Make it simple. Yeah. And I think that's the beauty of, of G Tech. I mean, it, like I said, it has a, it has a learning curve, but once you're proficient with it, then yeah, it's it's awesome. And then like crystal serum light is just like like I said, it's just so easy, and just nice. Shoot, I mean, bad news. My mind just went to earlier about getting a dot two. And once that happens, <laughs> <laughs> things things move fast. <laughs> oh boy. Oh shoot. Well, you know where a GT silver one is. Yeah. Zero miles, pretty much. And it's already got a clear bra and coating from us. Yeah, I'm tired of working on cars. I'm gonna take some time off. I gotta put the spacers, take the spacers off the 1M. I think uh, people talk to me and I think I gotta get injectors. And the freaking 2,000 bucks I gotta spend. For, is it tuned? You tuned it? Yeah, I detuned it actually. It had a custom whatever stupid tune. A dine-in or? No, it's a Cobb, through Cobb Access Port, but it was okay. uh, a you know, company in Orlando that you know, dyno tuned it. But the car just, just didn't, I didn't like how it felt. It was too much torque, not enough linearity to it. Yeah, that torque's what breaks stuff too. Yeah. Instant it's, torque. It's 480 foot pounds of torque. Yeah, like right off the bat. Yeah, at like, 3,800 RPMs. Yeah. And then it would fall flat on its face. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty of, you know, despite the fact that I hate the F80 M3 and what it sounds like, I mean, that car has, you know, has whatever, 450, 500 foot pounds of torque, depending on how you tune it. 
but the torque curve looks like this. It comes yeah, up it feels and then just flat. Yeah. yeah. That's what I like about my Type R too. It's the same way. Yeah. It feels just like an NA motor. And it pulls all the way to red line. Like, yeah. you know, it doesn't fall off at the, the mid range. I think the N54 falls off, but no matter what you do, but this, the way it was tuned, is just not good. Like, I'm not a big fan of having to modulate throttle. I know that, you know, it, it, if you're a V8 guy, your Mustang, Corvette guy, Camaro guy, that's what you do. You, yeah. you, you love that, having more torque than you need. I don't want to, I want to be able to mash the pedal to the ground and then have the car manage it. I changed my mind, I don't want to do the wheels. <laughs> <laughs> I want the video though. Yeah, um, I'm on the same camp as you. Yeah. <laughs> Luckily they're not the matte black ones, so yeah. they're a little more forgiving. We could put Wolf's on the glass if you want to try that. I'll, I'll try anything, yeah. I love trying new stuff, so. You know, Wolf's is not, not a uh, heavy heavy coating. I, I would wager that most glass coatings are not actual coatings anyway. They're they're you know a, a nano based. It's sealant. like a six month yeah. deal. Yeah. So Wolf's is a nano particle or nano. What I like doing is C2V3 on the windows every time you wash the car. Yeah. And then it's like. Well, that's what that's what's great about Wolf's is it plays well with all that stuff. Yeah. Bead maker, C2V3, any kind of drying aid, you can just top it with that and you'll get several years. And the beauty of it is it doesn't do, um, you don't have like uh, judder from your windshield wipers. Mm -hmm. But it's not crazy, crazy hydrophobic like some people like. I still use my wipers. Like I want to use my wipers. Yeah. You just don't want the water to lay flat. Right. That's what. Yep. That's what you. smears. Right. So I'm going to try to do some magic on that trim right now. I don't know if it's going to work or not. Double up product. Late on no, day. I'm just going to try to get that that wax off of it. Sometimes the like the solvents and the coating mm -hmm. will pull some of that out. Yeah, I mean, Wolf's does that too. The Wolf's, Wolf's trim coat a lot of times will pull out the uh, the white if it's not too aggressive. So what we're talking about here is there's uh, I'm going to blame it on Gabe. <laughs> I was polishing there, so it was probably me. It smacked the uh, edge of the edge of the trim with the polisher. That isn't as porous, so it might work a little better. It took the white off. It's still a little shiny, so we'll have to probably take like a yellow repez and just kind of hand polish it to blend it. Yeah, maybe I should start looking for a dot too. This is what happened with the one I got now, is that one day I woke up and said, you know, actually I, I, drove the, I drove the ones in the mountains and I'm like, you know, I can make this happen. A few days later. Because your Bloom was a, a regular GT3, right? Yeah, 2014.1, yeah. yeah. Night and day difference in the RS? No. No? No. Very little difference. Mainly front end grip. And less rear visibility? <laughs> Actually, you get more visibility out of an RS because the wing is taller. Yeah, that's the one thing Ryan complains about the most is you can't see. Yeah, the yeah, vents four, on the four liter delivers torque a little bit differently, but you know my my uh, fourteen it walked RSs because of the Dundon you know, Dundon headers and tune that I had. Yeah, so because it's only what like a thirty horsepower. Yeah, gap. Yeah. Finishing up on the roof, and then we'll work on the trim. What happens when the when the force pulls you back? Your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor. The floor, foot to the floor. 